I'd say, I wonder if my parents would still have my back if I raped someone. I think they would. Even if it was a full-on, like, ski mask, knife, jumped out of the bushes. I mean, I went, where the fuck was your head, you stupid boy? Remember when I got arrested for drunk driving, he, was, he called me asshole for a year and a half. Did not call me by my name for a year and a half. That was his punishment. I went to jail for one day for that crime. Anyway, uh, I fucking uh, hit a deer the other day, eh? Hit a fucking deer. Have you ever hit a deer before? It's a trip. It happens in one second total. So it's whipping down the highway. Everyone goes around 80 miles an hour. And I remember my brain going, is that Slender Man? Because your eyes start where the headlights are, and that's at the bottom. So you start at the legs, and you see Slender Legs. And you go, is that the Planner's Peanut guy just sort of traipsing across the street? This Mr. Skinny Legs? And then I go, it's a fucking deer. Stupid ass. Rubbish. Rubbish. Right into the side. So fucking loud. And then I'm like, holy fuck, holy fuck. And I think I should turn, I should pull over and maybe drag the carcass. And I think, no, I'm not doing that for that fucking elegant rat. That's all they are is elegant rats. And by the way, these stupid hunting licenses were invented back in the 50s and 40s and 30s when families in the country would often eat deer and they might eat too much. They don't do that anymore. They can just go to Peck's supermarket and get it for cheap. So you can't hunt enough deer. They are very graceful rats. Kill them all. They're fucking everywhere. One time I was, I was uh, in the Catskills and I saw a deer and I got out of my car and I go, you all right? Because I've swore, I swear on my bucket list is punching a deer in the face. In fact, I keep bird seed in the little thing in my car door. Hello, hello, because I need to punch one. And by the way, that's very brave. A deer will kick your fucking ass. I know of a guy who tried to domesticate one by lassoing it because it kept eating at his animal trough and it... He had the, the lasso tied to uh, the trough. It fucking went, Mrrr! ripped it to shreds. He cut the rope. Holy fucking shit. And then the deer goes with a noose around its neck, right? Just like a ghost of an innocent black man. Just starts chasing him as he runs to his house. And he's like, what the fuck? I freed it. He's running to his house. It jumps and starts biting his back, his shoulder blades, and hitting it in the head with hooves. So when I say I'm going to... F- punch a deer i'm not gonna punch a rabbit and it's gonna go ow and trickle away he might go really motherfucker yeah see see they will kick your ass look it's kicking his ass and the guy i'm talking about could not get out of bed for a week broken ribs black eye look at this it's a fucking good fight he's not even using his antlers Holy shit, it is kicking his ass. By the way, guy filming it, thanks. Is he laughing? No, he's freaking the fuck out. A deer is a worthy adversary. It's the Chinese of immigration. The Mexicans, you just have some attrition, they go home with their tails between their legs. The Chinese are not going anywhere. You'll notice they don't go to City Hall going, we need the rights, we need the rights. No, they just hide in the basement. Mexicans, I'm here illegally, and that's fucked up. And there's blood, and there's guts all along the side. It was a lot of fun. Fox News guest, men are more likely to get raped than women. Fact. Just a boring old fact. That's what happens uh, when you include prison. Okay, like, so pull him up. Pull him up. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, enlarge the text. Go to the top. What's his name? John Levine? Isn't that the name of the shitty SNL actor who says, yeah, I'm a liar? John Lovitz. That's Lovitz, right. So this is the guy. And look at his fucking face. So I go, I go, you, so you didn't even think when you wrote it. And he goes, yeah, it was one of five things I wrote that day. And I go, you fucking people, you ruined people's lives on a whim. And I get that you have no honor, no morals, nothing. But why did you choose writing if you have no honor? And he goes, what? And I go, I don't under- understand why you choose, chose writing as a vocation when you have no honor. I understand you having no honor, but why aren't you in real estate where you can lie about the value of the building or some shit? Why choose writing where your job is to use the English language to convey a story and then you just fucking lie all the time? You chose nonfiction writing and you're devoid of honor. And he's like, I don't know what you, this is weird. And then Ann goes, will you calm down? He's apologizing. And I go, you're a gay Jew, aren't you? 
And uh, he goes, yes. And I go, you people have no sense of community. You don't seem to see yourselves as part of our society. Why are you all such fucking saboteurs? And then Anne is going, whoa, calm down. And I go, and then this is when I went too far. I don't think the previous line was too far. And I go, help me out here, people. I said to the table, can you picture Scots getting on trains and going to Auschwitz? Does that seem incongruous to you? A bunch of Scottish people with, like, plaid blazers going, all right, all right, I'm getting on, fuck. Let's go off to Auschwitz. Hard work will set you free. I'm watching these Jew Holocaust movies, and they're like, you must go over there. And the Jew is like, okay, I'll go over there to the chain. And I'm just thinking, if that was a Scot, he'd go, see you, you cunt. And he would just, like, rip the guy's throat out or something. I mean... We've had a lot more practice than the Jews. We were under siege for 700 years from the English. Jews were relatively... No, they had the Egyptians. They had some practice. Anyway, that was my attack. I let it go because Anne was telling me to calm down, and she said uh, that he's apologizing, but I don't see it like that. Like, if someone robs your house and they go, I said I was sorry. God. I don't fucking care if you're sorry, you fucking little cunt. And I've already met one of these people. I met um, J.K. <laughs> that's the author of Harry Potter. J.K. Trotter. I met him for lunch once. I wrote an article about it called The Accidental Gawker on TackyMag.com. And I met this guy. And this guy got Razib Khan fired for being a racist. Yes. A white fag named J.K. Trotter heard that Razib Khan was being hired at the New York Times because he's a very accomplished young Indian scientist, so they get their multiculturalism in, and the guy knows genetics inside and out. I follow him on Twitter. Half the things I don't understand, he talks about these CRISPRs and how we're, we're, we're going to figure out cancer by predicting the way cells will morph to devoid chemo. And Fascinating guy, right? He once said that he's open to data on race and IQ. Open to it. No, that's verboten in today's society. So this fucking little cunt, J.K. Trotter, pushes that out there and gets Razib fired. So I go to meet him and I go, so we're living in a world now where a brown scientist gets fired by a little white dick for being open to data. That doesn't seem unusual to you? And he's like, what? I didn't do anything. And I go, you don't think you got him fired from the Times? He clearly did. And he goes, no. And I go, so it was a coincidence that the day your article came out, little fucking evil cunts just like the people who call me every 10 minutes they don't realize that other people are human beings and have lives they just keep slitting babies with razor blades so kale you have been vilified by the ladies yeah it's sad that you have to come on this show because this show is known as the wife beater network sure but ironically uh this is the only place that will have you well, I do appreciate it. Um, it's almost like you get accused of racism, you're innocent, and you go on DavidDuke.com because he's the only guy that will have you, and you come there to go, I'm not a racist. Well, I, mean, I have to be honest. I've been advised by, pr I think, everyone to everyone. Not come on this show. Now, you don't mean every single person in the world. No. no you I don't, don't mean that like a be. little Cambodian child. No, no, no. They, okay. they, they do not subscribe. But... Um, <laughs> No, I mean, you know, just like in the, the very few number of people outside of my family that I'm in contact with, uh, I testing the waters to, to kind of gauge the reaction to see like, you know, yeah, I'm thinking about going on the show to kind of break the silence. And, and well, here's the problem. Sorry to interrupt. Here's the problem with you. Uh, no, with your thing, with your situation. Yeah. You have to tread lightly. You could end up in court. This could be a criminal thing. So you have to watch what you say. So I'll just try to say everything so it's out in the open. Yeah. And then uh, you won't have to sit there watching every single word. You know, I got to say, the me. way you talk, you're a broken man. I've been by myself for six and a half months with all this shit in my head nonstop. You know what I mean? And like, you're destroyed. I'm like, fine. Your eyes dart around the room when you're talking about this. She really fucking destroyed you. I've been in L.A. working for 12 years. I moved out there when I was 19, pursuing a career in comedy. That's all I've wanted to do. And, and where do you live now? With my mommy in Philadelphia, you know? So she did get rid of you, and she did get you out of comedy. No, well, uh, for now, yeah. What's your job? I don't have a job. I, I don't... I, what I've been doing for the past six months, it was, you know, it, a lot of people are like, he's hiding, you know, that's an admission of guilt. It's like, I took some time off. I, I was in mourning for the loss of my 12 years of time and effort into a career, the loss of every one of my friends, including all my closest friends, and... 
it's uh it, i was about to say like yeah i'm a victim and then you know i started to censor myself exactly yeah what you're talking about but. it's and this is why i'm so obsessed with the first amendment these days because the government used to be the bad guy and i still hate the government don't get me wrong but as far as the front lines go my beef is with the people the culture well it's terrifying you know like i've listened to serial you know like and just who knows about that guy? Whether he's innocent. Snap, crackle, or pop. <laughs> See you guys later. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even get that. What you... Listen to cereal. Oh, I got you. Okay. Um, but you know, I mean, it's he means like, the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy is in prison for what eighteen years. Yep. Uh, it's very compelling. You throughout the whole series, you know, it's like, did he do it? Now I think he did it. Now I don't think he did it. So like, right. I'm I'm very conscious of that. Very aware of that. So I'm like, I know I didn't do it. And I'm so hyper aware of every single word that I say and everything I do so nothing can be taken out of context or used against me. I woke up one morning thinking, fuck, am I going to have to defend myself from going to prison for 15 years, you know? And I have spoken with, you know, plenty of attorneys and they've all assured me that no, there's no case here, which is exactly why. And they know that as well. Don't, exactly if I were you, I'd want it to go to court. I do want it to go like to court. Like Mattress Girl's I guy, I forget his name. We all remember Emma Sulkowicz, but no one can remember the guy whose life she ruined. Right. I don't uh, remember his name. He, he wanted to go to court. He would have loved to go to court. That would be ideal. That would be best case scenario. And they did it in such a way, they were so calculated and... Um, Aware Religious. of what they were, yeah, of what they were doing. That they purposefully they got together. They met up beforehand. They even brag about or talk about that, whatever word you want to use. Uh, that they did get together beforehand, and they were advised they didn't use my name. They never uh, two ex girlfriends. One ex girlfriend made rape allegations, uh, accusations on all social media. I responded, and then another ex girlfriend, a previous ex girlfriend before her, uh, did the same thing, and. Uh, but they neither ever used my name. The first ex-girlfriend, she had her n current boyfriend at the time. Or I don't know if she told him. He probably did it on his own volition, whatever. And But he used my name on Twitter. But she didn't even have to because I'm the only comedian that she's ever dated. Everyone, okay. everyone knew who she was talking about. Lenny Bruce was accused of um, profanity, which he did. And it was a fascinating case until he became so consumed with the details that he'd be yeah. like... And then on C-34 here, right, these cats are saying that the people, now, that when he talk about the people, he means you and me. The people, I don't know why I'm doing Joe Pesci for Lenny Bruce, but uh, <laughs> Jim Gold would get the same way about his case. They, they get into the nuances that no one cares about. So when you do that, I'm just going to hit. Fair enough, yeah. I'm going to hit the Bruce bell, and that's when you start sounding like Lenny Bruce. All right, all right. Um, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's explain the case. So, John, can you pull up this case? I'm the new villain of the week, ex-boyfriend of comedian Beth Stelling. Okay, so I am saying the name Beth Stelling. You have not said a name. Denies her claims that he verbally, physically abused and raped her. Um, you look pretty cute there. What are you, eight in that picture? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so, yeah. That's this is the smoking gun, this picture. And I got to say, when uh, I remember this happening, and I've always hated... I've always said, like, we want our rapists to be big, huge, bulky alpha males that are blonde and have a sweater with a little letter on it. And they always end up being these beta male comedians. So I remember when this story came up, I went, knew it. These fucking little pussy comedians, these pajama boys, they're the ones doing the raping. And so I was on board with this. I never said anything because right. I didn't know the facts. I'm like Patton Oswalt and fucking... Who else was on board with your lynching? That was a heartbreaking one because I love Patton Oswalt, but also uh, Steve fucking Martin responded, <laughs> responded <laughs> to him. Martin. And uh, I don't think, I don't think, I don't even really remember what Steve Martin said, but. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. That's not, no, Steve Martin's very interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, not really. It was just like he responded to Patton Oswalt's tweet. He made a kind of clever joke. I never liked kale anyway, spelled with a K like the vegetable, ha ha ha, you know. And then I think Steve Martin thought he was actually talking about kale and then whatever. But just to see Steve Martin fucking talking about me in this context was a... So what was Steve Martin's honor. joke? I don't even think it was a joke. I think it was just some sort of response to like a, I don't know. So sad or something. So these guys, so they jump on board and this is, this is what I want to focus on with you, okay? Yeah. Obviously people are going to see her bruised legs. We'll talk about what happened or I'll give my theory. Sure. Uh, but this isn't a court of law, so 
whenever we talk about here, we have to assume you're guilty or innocent. You right. know what I mean? Because yeah. if this show is just about how this guy's innocent and he got fucked, well, then it's biased and we don't have any evidence. I, yeah, it hasn't I don't been through that. the ringer. I would like any conversation. What I find interesting is that without a court of law, you can accuse a guy of rape, uh, not go to the cops, and ruin his fucking life. Yeah. Now, just for fun, let's say you are a rapist. That's not the society we have set up for ourselves since the Magna Carta. The society we've set up for ourselves is that is probably the third biggest thing there is. Murder, child molestation, rape. So when that gets thrown out there, whoa, we stop the presses. We get all our ducks in a row and we have a huge involved trial. And when I like, just had a guy, a black guy, he raped this unconscious white girl, pissed on her face. <laughs> Sorry to laugh. When he was done, and he said, that's for 400 years of slavery, bitch. I mean, as far as horrific things to do, that's one of the funniest ones I've heard in a while. Sure? He's looking at 15 years now, minimum. He can't do parole or anything. That's the society we've made. Right. When you do something that horrific, 15 years at least. And I'd even argue that rape is considered the number one worst. I mean, you know, you go to prison. Well, it, like, if you go to prison for murder... You, you know, you're kind of respected, maybe, feared, maybe. Oh, I see what you you're to, If you go to prison as a rapist, you're fucking raped and killed. Or not, maybe not killed, no, no, but no, you're no, definitely no. raped. Dude, they'd die of exhaustion if they killed all the rapists in prison. Right. It's child molesting that you get. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. I think rape is like, whatever. Okay. And there's been so many bullshit cases even in jail yeah. that I think a lot of them just... Like, I talked to a prison warden once, and he goes, you wouldn't believe how many people are here for domestics. I'm going to say a third or closer to half. Yeah. And his story was, this is totally off topic, but guy gets in a fight with a girl. She calls the cops. They give him, even if she changes her mind, she's called the cops. He gets a restraining order. Can't be near her. They make up. He starts living with her. They get in another fight a year later. As far as the law goes, someone with a restraining order crawled through the window right. and fought her. Right, right, right. A creepy stalker. Even though he has an underwear drawer there, that's irrelevant. So then, boom, he's off to prison. Yeah. Anyway. So she's got these bruises on her legs. What happens to your life? Let's break, let's break it down hour by hour. Oh, your lifestyle errors just keep piling up. Holy shit. Yeah, so I don't think he even knew what was going on, I, but just to see him like involved in the conversation, you know, one of my idols. Your childhood hero is yeah. making rape jokes. Even Johnson is, yeah. Wow. Part of the fuck Kale conversation. Whatever. Um, uh... Hour by hour, I mean, it was it was pretty awful immediately. Um, you getting calls, people going, turn on the news. <laughs> no. What I, exactly did she say? Sorry to keep interrupting you. I want to get these details perfect. So, what exactly was the initial release? Was it a tweet? She put it across all social media platforms. Well, the main ones. She did it on Twitter, or at least a link on Twitter, Facebook post, Instagram post. And it was a link to what? A HuffPo article? No, it was a, it was her. She uploaded photos herself. To what? To Instagram and Facebook. Oh, okay. And wrote a very long, detail. Can we find that? The Facebook post? Even the, uh, any of those articles, like the Daily Mail one has, you know, her thing, my response, you know, um, but. I want to see what her initial accusation was exactly. It's like four pages, but she, she. Sam Morrill, friend of our, a friend of the show. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I see him all the time. He's on Red Eye all the time. Throws you to the wolves. Yeah, it was a tweet at, I think... You might be able to get him with your reach. Because he tweeted it at Lennox Lewis. Because Lennox Lewis tweeted at Beth, fuck, uh, at her, and, uh, you know, was like, I support you, whatever, you know, let me... Lennox know. Lewis? The boxer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, let me know... Lennox Lewis? He was like, let me know... He hates uh, rape because of Tyson, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. He was like, let me know if you need me to handle him or something like that, or who he is, if you need me to find him, something like along those lines. And then Sam uh, Morrill tweeted at him, his name is Cal Hartman, hopefully you can get him with your reach. So he like found a way to put a little clever joke in there and get my name out there. You know what this is starting to smell of? The demand for white, middle class, normal rapist doesn't meet the supply. So when they get an inkling of something, they fucking go nuts. I mean, I don't know. I, kn I know that it's um, more interesting uh, a story, you know. All right, so we got to find out what she said. She says, I 
there are two pictures. Here's one of me on stage, uh, very happy and performing. And then at that same time, here a picture, here's a picture of bruises on my legs from a relationship I had. Both This year has been both some of the happiest moments and some of the saddest moments. Uh, I was in a very abusive relationship, verbally abusive, physically abusive, and I was raped. And I'm saying this now because I want to start doing material on stage, or I'm starting to do material on stage, and I'm refer referencing that. So I'm preparing you for my imminent material yeah. so you don't have a heart attack. when Because comedians do that all the time. They do What they do is they say, I'm going to be doing some material soon. Just thought I'd lay the groundwork here. I'm going to be talking about my mother-in-law on Thursday. I think you know. So then the audience is ready. Excuse me. I think she was doing it because uh, it's such a, the comedy community is so small. It's like you know yeah. New York and L.A. and I guess you can kind of include Chicago, but everybody knows each other. Like, right. She didn't. She never had to say my name. He never had to say my name. Everyone knew immediately. You know. Right. But right. She, right. But it was like for her, it was her way of bracing all of our mutual friends for the embellished jokes that she was using, uh, that she was, um, I, I, I haven't even heard the jokes. I've Why would she, like, Tig Notaro didn't say, I've got breast cancer, I'm about to do a long bit on my breast well, because cancer. Because of the subject matter, she's, she's going breast to... Breast cancer's pretty intense subject matter. Well, what I'm saying is, like, she's going to be saying, this is my previous ex, this is the relationship I just got out of. Everyone in the scene, everyone in the comedy community knows either knows that that's me she's referring to, to, or they know someone who can tell them, oh, that's, she's referring to Kale. Right. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's why I think she... Yeah, I got you, I got you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Uh, so let's break down exactly what happened to your life. So, so she shows these pictures of bruises on her leg that are from you. Yes, yeah, those yeah. bruises on her legs are from my So fingers. tell us about, like, you lose your job immediately. What happens? Your boss at Arby's calls you up? Well, I'm a comedian, so I'm not, you know, usually working. But I, uh, you know, I, you always have several plates spinning at yep. once. You know, I've, I had plenty of things that I was doing. And, you right. Know, like what? Well, I mean, I had a pre like a development thing with Comedy Central. They wanted a script from me. Um, I had for a sh sitcom. Um, no, not a sitcom. I mean, it would be like. I mean, I'm not going to go into what the, the show would be, but just a like kind of sketch show. Sketch show, yeah. okay. Yeah. Those are very hard to get at Comedy Central. Absolutely. Um, so that was just. How there. did they tell you that was canned? Well, they didn't. But I also. Okay, to be fair, I haven't reached out to them since, but I think it's pretty uh, safe bet that... Uh, okay, so that doesn't count as a good uh, example if you haven't reached out to them. But they just stopped calling you and you figured it's because of that. I, I haven't been in contact with anyone. It's, it's been a complete Give us specific shutout. examples of you losing your job. Well, I, I, like I just said, I didn't have... it. Well, okay, there was one I was working for some website coming up with pranks. I think it was break.com. They didn't ask me back. They didn't, okay. they didn't have me back. So all of a sudden, uh, you had a... I, you had a steady stream of gigs that were normal for a comedian. They usually have like seven on the go. And then all at once, boop, 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 boop your phone stopped ringing and well, all your gigs stopped happening. Yeah, but more um, uh, immediate and more, uh, you know, severe than that was I, it was like my, my close friends, all of my friends, all of, and, and my roommates. Like the, the first thing that happened was I was woken up by my buddy mm -hmm. and he goes, you need to look at Instagram looked at Instagram, went and puked for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to do. Uh, you know, just asking for any sort of like, uh, fuck, what, what, what the fuck is going on? What, what do I need to do right now? You know, he was of zero help. Uh, and then... Did he end up abandoning you? Yeah, yeah, he did. What did he do? He was... Uh, my best friend and uh, for, um, for like 16 years went to high school together. He's my writing partner. He's my com like my I considered him a brother more than a friend. Uh huh. And uh, he was very afraid of the whole fucking day. The whole morning when he woke me up to say look at Instagram to until I left to go be you know <laughs> around family. He was pacing around my living room saying this affects me. This affects me too. And he was freaking out and he was, you know, so worried about um, his past relationships, dirt coming up from his past relationships, you know, being posted online, his current girlfriend leaving him. He was just very, you know, it, I could go into that for fucking ever, but I don't, you know, okay. really want to. Yeah. Let's take a break. We're getting too depressed.
Does that give you a dude boner, him getting up to go piss and say, all right, Tom, you're all right? No. Really? No. See, it's funny because you don't really give a shit about ISIS and Muslims and, and politics. I would not say that at all, but I think I'm going to uh, stick to one extremely divisive topic at a time. You know, I'm going <laughs> to focus, focus on myself and these rape act allegations all right. first and then maybe get into how I feel on ISIS and Muslims. And I know this case too well, and I'm scared that uh, I'm I, I kinda wanna jumping go back. too far ahead. Yeah. You're butting in a little much. Maybe I should get a bell too, but I just want to say that... Uh, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely don't want to brush past the, uh, yeah, I definitely put those bruises on her legs and then move on. You know, it was, it's, that's, I, I when I gave my statement and I did have my uh, attorney look it over, mm -hmm. I had, I got a PR guy and you know, I'm getting flack for like hiring an attorney and hiring a PR guy, but you know what? You fucking wake up to rape allegations and see how you handle it and see what you do. You know, I've never been in that situation before. So yeah, I got some people to help me. And but I wrote that statement myself. It was me. They didn't want me to say um, what was my wording. I was like, uh, she's painting a picture. She's giving a story that's so far from the truth. They wanted me to say I did not do those bruises. I did not rape her. I did not do anything. Well, I 100% did not rape her, but I, those bruises are from my fingers. Right. So I did never. I never ever ever wanted to say anything that's untrue because I have nothing to hide. I did not. We got that was an unfortunate night. But, you know, it was completely mutual. We and we were, know about that night? How did she get those bruises? We were fucking around in bed. We were fucking around in bed. What do you mean fucking around? Well, having sex? No, we had had sex earlier that night. We, we weren't even having sex. We were like a dominance thing. We were, we were, you know, like... What do you mean a dominance thing? Who's on top? Who's, you know, she, she's a big. Were you girl. both drunk? Yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd gone out that... So it was wrestling... Now, I've wrestled drunk you girls before. Yeah. You start out wrestling, and then something snaps in them where they go, I'm going to win this fight. And then they start getting super violent, and you're like, uh, just for the record, I'm stronger than you, but simmer fucking down. And then they keep ramping it up, maybe even like punch you in the face, and you go, will you chill the fuck out? Here, look, I am stronger than you. Well, that is 100% exactly what happened. And the thing is, is she's strong as fuck. She used to play field hockey. She's got some real big, strong legs. Right. And uh, it was all playful and fun and, you know, uh, who's stronger, who's, who's doing what. And then it just snapped. It, just, it changed. And then, it, and then it turned into me keeping myself from being fucking kicked, you know. And, right. And, and, and from trying to hold her down and pin her down to the bed. That sounds awful. I've, ne I've seen there domestic was sexual. pictures. It's always facial. You know, it's always the woman wearing big, the, the cliche is the big sunglasses for the black guy. You never have a guy going, hey, where's my dinner? I'm sorry, dinner's not ready. Oh, yeah? Right. Yeah, I mean. You just start squeezing her thighs. The wording, the, the wording that they chose, too, was, you know, like, saying that I was verbally abusive, that I was physically abusive, and that they had uh, been raped. It just that the, the, the choice of words opens it up. It sounds like it was an on there's this ongoing like I'm hitting them all the time and I'm you right. know, yelling at them all the time. I've never hit a woman in my life ever. I've barely been in fights with guys. I think I've been in like five fights, you know, and it's a good number. And it's, I mean, they're all right. And, you know, usually ended pretty quickly. And but uh, I've never, ever hit a woman in my life. Never forced myself sexually on anyone ever. Huh. And it's, you know, it, yeah. Let's. Do you have? Because because I don't want this to become the show where uh, accused rapists come and pitch their side without you know full evidence. Sure. Do you have any evidence of that? And I say them because after she came out, her another ex girlfriend came and said, "Yeah, me too." It was a one-two punch, and it was actually you know kudos to them for the plan of attack because it was very effective. But I I gave my statement, um, hoping. You know, uh, incorrectly assuming, unfortunately, but really hoping that, and I hate this phrase, but it would start a dialogue. I, I was hoping that it would be like, okay, so these are some pretty heavy allegations uh, towards me, N untrue. Uh, let's, uh, I guess this is a public thing. Our, our, our personal relationship is now uh, majorly in the public eye. Let's talk about it. And I wasn't met with any, in, there was no, there was zero interest to hear from me. You know what Dove Charney did? He was uh, accused of raping a woman. And keeping a woman as a, a sex slave, I think it's called quid pro quo, where you get to work here if I get to fuck you whenever I want type of thing. Um, they wanted a quarter billion dollars, by the way. $250 million. I'm like, 
I, I'll get raped for that. I mean, you can punch me in the face every day for a quarter bill. Uh, he had footage on his camera. He always takes pictures when he fucks of this poor woman, Kendra Kimberlo, getting raped. And she was going, ah, mm, ah, mm. and then we put them up on Street Carnage. So that ended her, her case. And, and by the way, we would never do that normally, but these girls were going on Good Morning America in little prim and proper pantsuits like Hillary Clinton and saying, this is what happened, we're victims. And then the other one, uh, fuck, I forget her name, uh, Hispanic name, she was sending him texts after this alleged quid pro quo thing when she wasn't even working there anymore, saying, I'm your sex slave, I want to lick your asshole. I researched all this and almost puked half the time going through these. Um... And by the way, you know that, what was it, Frederick Douglass, that abolitionist, who black guy who helped fight slavery? Her, you know, probably, people have no. signatures at the bottom. She had him as a signature, like, a man is only as good as his word, and blah, blah, blah. Some old-timey quote at the bottom of all her emails. As she says she wants to be a sex slave and lick his fucking asshole. <laughs> Irina Morales, that was her name. Irene Morales. Anyway, that absolved him, and his... his uh, all these, because he had a case after case after case, because it would just be a quick 40 grand to shut them up. And I think this happens all over L.A., especially in Hollywood. You just say an actor beat off in front of you, you get 40K to shut up, boom, it's gone. Mm. And it just becomes part of their budget. Now, uh, Dove ended that by having those two pieces of post-accusatory evidence, and he still was taken down. But uh, that definitely helped his reputation. Do you have similar stuff? Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. We 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 were together for months after, you know, she's claiming that 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 day. You know, we 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 were together. We were still in a relationship, and I know a lot of people are like, that doesn't matter. Some people are afraid, but no, we were in a. Uh, we went to Ireland together. We, you know, we had and yeah, she. Even w once we finally did break up, actually, um, it was very hard for us to s stay away from each other. We wanted to, you know, it was fuck. All yeah, I mean, yeah, and we were texting each other, and and then we kind of fell into texting each other, uh, like we did when we were together. And you know, she would she she would send me unsolicited, you know, because a couple times I was like, yeah, I need to get the fuck away. I am out of my mind, depressed. I want to be with her. She does not want to be with. She me. dumped you. Yeah. So what what, what was her motive to? Well, let me let me finish. Like, I'm just saying it's that you know. Uns ding on me. Ding on me. <laughs> yeah. One to one. Um, but no, unsolicited, sending me videos of the two of us fucking and saying, like, uh, you know, I'm in my hotel room. While she has a, a boyfriend, by the way, a new boyfriend, you know, I don't have a girlfriend at the time, whatever, I guess that's irrelevant. But, you know, sending, like, I just came so hard uh, watching, you know. Let me pull video. up that video of them fucking, please. <laughs> yeah. Do you have that? Is it an MP4? Right at that same time, a couple of days before she posted this stuff online, my grandmother fell and broke her hip, essentially. And so I was planning on going to Columbus and uh, helping out with that. Mm -hmm. And so my lawyer and the PR dude were like, you know what? Uh, you've made your statement. Any further statement will come from us from now on. You know, you don't, you don't need to engage people. And I was like, can I go just take some time? And so I went and spent some months with my family. See, I disagree. I think the second this came out, you should have made a video with 100% of all the texts and everything and broken it down. I still think you should do like a comedy special where you just dump all the evidence and go, this is what happened. I think they're doing a comedy special. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's happening, but like they're... Two girls? And, and, and then others. he raped us. And rape I, me. And rape me, too. I don't know too. if that's still happening, but I heard at one point they were going to do like a... Jesus like Christ. Like Can't a you sue them? They never used my name, you know? I, that, I well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you have a shampoo and the girl on the bo bottle looks exactly like Beyonce, and more than, say, a dozen people think it's Beyonce, she can sue the shampoo company because people perceived... That as Beyonce. Right. I'm not giving up. I'm, this is my first, you know, it's been about five months of being around family, helping out with family. There were some family issues, you know, with uncles and grandmothers, and it was nice to not be out of my mind sad every day, you know, and then that's all taken care of. And for the past month, it's finally been like, okay, I have to start dealing with this again, staying silent has not been a good doesn't option. work it does, it's, it's it's capitulation do you have the instagram picture yet no not that is that that's not it no but uh is that it 
No, it's the it's the one where they're drinking wine. I mean, there, there's yeah, there's a there's a bunch. There's the two there's uh, the two of my exes. Yeah, like out and there's captions of all my all my exes. You know, like saying we should start a coven and you know we should write a book of a book about this guy. And you Jesus know. Christ, are women evil? I'm starting to think they're just evil. Maybe. Oh, I I figured this out the other day on this show. They're not evil. That's why housewives are so nice. But when you put in this computer virus called you need to make it in comedy and be a dude and buy a house on your own and never have maternal instincts, when you throw that fucking loop at them, they are like a broken robot that's wet. And they're like, fuck up his life. We're a coven. You're talking about motive and, you know, have him pull up the graph that uh, that Pat Dixon sent me. Um, But. So we got an Instagram pic and a graph. What's going on here, boys? We, um, you know what? I remember her on the Carson Daly show. It was around when you were dating her. And I remember her talking about how much she loves yeah. fucking you. Yeah. It was, yeah, that was... Yeah, I mean, there, there was, when we first started dating, you know, she actually is talking about how she normally dates fat guys, I think she said, or maybe not that word, but, you know, she normally dates pudgy guys, and she's not used to... You're a little pudgy. Well, now, yeah. Oh, <laughs> From the depression, <laughs> yeah, and also maybe uh, you know, twelve. Is that it? LA, but <laughs> yeah. Point three. Men I... always think that women weigh about one. Every it's every somewhere in about the middle, but and it's like she's talking. Here. Here. Essentially, she's just bragging about another word for them. My mom calls them tree trunks. It's back a which little is bit more. Not nice. I I was eating a lot of bagels. I remember back wanting more. to. Do a but she, she, what she's doing? Let's get it. Let's get it. Where is it? <laughs> and she was like, "Beth, this is like a once in a lifetime thing." And I said, "Yeah, go back Statistics. more." She said it was in the middle. More of a model type bod. Okay, yeah, and just maybe like 15 really seconds before this. All right. And right there, yeah, right there. I don't know. So not even close to the middle. I don't know. know. Like I don't know how tall I am. I'm Beth Stelling, and I'm a stand-up comedian. Thank you. It's so good to be here instead of getting married and having kids. You guys. See? Thank you. I want kids. I just, I don't know if I'm going to have time to come home and let them out. (laughs) And that's... See? I have always dated thick men. Real men have curbs, you know? I started dating more of a model type bod. And I didn't really know what to do with it at first. And... Weeks after we started sleeping together, I realized like how sore my hips were <laughs> because I was used to just this is you. Up on a little yeah. This is when right when we first started dating. Belly, you know. And I was like, I, I mean, guess I don't know I why we're showing like all of her. When my sister got married, she asked like, me to thank be the Thank you. Leader. That's that's great. Just you know, her. How does it make you feel seeing her? That's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, you know, I wanted to say I went through the exact same thing. Well, not the exact same thing, but I said, I pointed out, I should say, that trannies are mentally ill gays. And all my spinning plates crashed. I had a show with Discovery. Uh, I lost my ad agency. There was all this. I'm still seeing the ramifications. I just had trouble with a refi on my place because the people at the bank Googled me, found that out. I was in a movie called Creative Control, and one of the songs was pulled by the artist when they found out I was in the movie because I want to kill trannies. They, they ramp it up, too. It's never the original accusation. Right. It becomes I want to, I'm a, the tranny hunter. <laughs> right. Um, and at the peak of this, it was, I think it was Labor Day weekend last year or something, at the peak of this pariahness where people, like people wouldn't even answer their phones, of all the people in the world, David Cross... Uh, was the guy who was like, yeah, I'll come upstate and, you know, hung out with me for a few days. I was, my, my wife didn't even know how serious it was because I just told her about one or two things. And I said, oh, the show got canceled. They ran out of money. Like, I didn't tell her what had really happened. It's, it's weird. But they, so after that incident, I told her, you know what? I don't appreciate you saying that I owe you money publicly online. You, I, we are not together. I don't even agree that I owe you money. You can kind of fuck off. I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. Then she said, hey, by the, okay, by the way, when we broke up that last time we had sex, that was rape. So it wasn't until months and months and months later when I kind of told her to fuck off that I'm, I'm moving on and I don't agree that I owe you money. Then it was like, okay, well, that last time we had yeah, sex. Somewhere in the past two years, regret has become rape. We Any sex, sex you didn't enjoy, even retroactively, if you look back and stroke your female beard, that now can be rape. You can just magically turn things into rape like you're this time-traveling magician. I feel so 
crazy and stupid that I'm like trying to actively not say their names. So whatever. But you know, my my most the one the one who made the allegations first. Uh, she we we didn't even fucking have sex. <laughs> we didn't even have sex. The bruises on the leg. Yes, that's not a sex. Sex didn't happen then. No, th there was no sex there. So that's fucking insane. And uh, then then my other ex before her, we had breakup sex. She dumped me as well. And uh, didn't take it very, I didn't take that, I'd never been dumped before. We were together for three years with a little tiny break in the middle. I wanted to be with her forever. I pictured her having, uh, us getting married and having kids. And I was fantasizing about like that. And like, I was like, we're poor now. And in this, uh, which is also a stupid mentality for me trying to build a career. But I was like, we're poor now, but eventually, you know, we'll buy a house and uh, this will all be great. And uh, a stupid mentality. That's what all earth men do. No, I, I know. And I wanted that. And, but I also was broke. I'm a right, fucking right. comedian. I don't, I wasn't able to provide the things that I was fantasizing about. So, you know, um, let's, what, I feel like we're not including enough, uh, media from here. You got the picture. What about that Pat Dixon thing? We glossed over that. I, I sent him got that? of people just saying, you know, what would be the motivation? Well, you say you sent them. Do you mean cast or you mean that guy? Uh, what, what's his name? Yeah. Yeah, him. I That's our top researcher, David Cast. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a graph Pat Dixon sent me of people saying, what would be the motivation? Why would they lie? Why would anyone That's lie? That's the big thing. Why would they Why lie? Would they lie? I met this girl uh, near my house in Williamsburg. I met her mother, actually. And she said, oh, yeah, Terry Richardson, he, he molested my daughter. And uh, she, she made it. And I, and I go... Are you sure that's what happened? She goes, well, why would she? It's like Bill Cosby. You know, you look at the numbers. Why would they lie? And I, I go, I didn't say this, but I was thinking, I bet if I Google her, that will be the only thing that comes up. So I went home, I Googled her, and it was like three pages of Terry Richardson did this to me. That was her entire identity. And as a writer, blogger, nothing else came up. She had no other articles, no scoops, no original ideas. It just becomes a woman's identity at some point. Yeah, well, it's definitely all of ours now. You know, the three of the. All it the three actually three becomes of your identity too. Yeah, if you Google my name, their pictures come up. You got these fucking pics or what? I we showed them all. They're the all Pat Dixon showed. chart. Pat Dixon chart. Whatever. It's it's like it was just um show you know it's you saying didn't show them all. You just showed a bunch of boring pictures. I never even got the Coven quote. Come on, David. What are you fucking doing? If it's, it's like, like a Google your analytics. Your mom thing. jeans. You know, you, you, you just see her. Well, whatever. That's, I think we should focus on what's more important right now, which is deepdiscount.com. It's a huge supporter of the shows God. here at Compound Media. And if you don't know Deep Discount, the name says it all. It's the site to find a, uh, uh, uh oh, to find a great selection in low, low prices on DVDs, Blu-rays, video games, collectibles, music, and more. And right now, Deep, Count, Deep Discount is offering 15% off anything site-wide for all of our subscribers. That's 15% off anything on the site. But you got to use a special coupon code, COMPOUND. That's C-O-M-P-O-U-N-D. In addition to that great deal, if you're a fan of Comic-Con, then you will save an even bigger deal because DeepDiscount.com is celebrating the San Diego Comic-Con with a sale on all animated and anime content. So... If you love owning movies, DVDs, Blu-rays, CDs, and video games, support and our sponsor and go to deepdiscount.com. It's a great site with an incredible selection and prices that are hard to beat. Plus, you'll save big with an additional 50% off any purchase. Just use coupon code COMPOUND at checkout. Thank you, Deep Discount. Boy, I really fucked that up. Uh, you got these pictures or not? Uh, they're coming through the internet, but no, I don't have them yet. Coming so, through the internet? Yeah. What is this, a steam-powered studio? The internet. <laughs> You send it through the vacuum tube. Foom. Soomp. Poo. That must have been fun working in those offices in the 50s with the foom. Foom. I remember my mom worked in a furniture store and they had one when I was a kid. Foom. And I would put stuff in it. We're going to be getting the black guy from Police Academy in here to do the sound. Oh, good. That. Uh, what does that say now? Incentives that drove Beth Sterling to come forward with her abuse. I got tired of women feeling like they have to keep quiet or it may ruin their reputation or it may ruin their career. So coming forward about abuse may ruin their career. And then we go down and we look at her popularity. Piddling along and then she gets a spike. Yeah, it's just, you know, people are saying why, why, would, they, why would they lie? And, and I honestly believe that they had no idea 
that it was going to go viral. I feel like they kind of like were playing with a little bit of fire. You know, mm-hmm. let's let's fuck with the ex-boyfriend. We're we're a team now. All of his exes are a fun are little team. prank. Yeah, you know, and like I want to do these jokes and I'm going to need to embellish because that's what I do and you know, I she she used to uh, she had a ton of material about me. It's on it's on her album that she promotes or at least is promoted in the end of all, all of these articles, but um it's sort of like teenagers. I've always been scared of teenagers when I walk home late at night because their frontal lobe isn't fully developed. I think it gets developed when you're 22 or something. So they'll do something in a fight, like grab a bottle and smash it on your face, and you go, dude, that's different than a fight. You're going to sever my yeah. facial muscle tissue, and then I'm going to be like this for the rest of my life. And you're going to be in jail, by the way, for 22 years. Yeah, They, like you, they don't get ramifications. You know, it, it got out of control. They I... <laughs> I guarantee they thought they were going to be like, all right, let's let's fuck with Kale. Let's get him in, you know, in some shit in the scene. Let's maybe, you know, get him banned from the theater. Let's get him to like people stop going to his shows. And then it was the, you know, biggest story in L.A. or comedy for like three days. And I was uh, move on. Well, no, they can't move on now. You're now, the, like now, this. now they're all in. You know, now, now they couldn't even go back if if they wanted to. You know, now they're they're completely in. They couldn't be like, okay, hey, you know what? I may have exaggerated a little bit. I may have let. let oh yeah, you can't do that. Control. They're fucking. It's, it's like that nine eleven dude who came out and goes, I actually wasn't even there. Yeah, and he's fucking ridiculed forever. Yeah, yeah. So that's why in. that's why it's so crucial to go to the fucking cops. I listened to her, uh, you know, the second ex's um, podcast that she she came and she rushed home to, you know, jump on to, to jump on the, the viral train to do her podcast because it was still a story. And uh, she see now you got me all like self-conscious about what, what I'm talking Good, about. I want you to be look, it's an entertainment show. You this should be self-conscious. We're not hanging out. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want you to be worried. Am I constantly being interesting? That's the point of this show. Sure. Well, now in fact was, that wasn't interesting. No, what was I saying? You were talking about her podcast. She ran home to do the second just, accusation lure. Just before it stopped being on on people's mind, you know. Before you know, so she could just jump on the viral train. Just get it going. Yeah, That's fucking pathetic. Look, um, uh, are, you're a proud boy, right? Sure. Um, I've got. A, I, I, I'm very proud of you for coming up here. I know how these things can get in your head, and you think uh, I'll be quieter, it'll go away, I'll stay with my family for a while, people will forgive me, I'll come back. I don't think that's the way to go. I think the way to go is to come back full on, with evidence and and proof, and say. This is not what she says it is. I want to fight. I'm not going down with a fight. John Ronson's book, uh, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, got it. is a great example of that, where he looks at all these cases and he goes, the ones that tried to hide looked guilty. The ones that said, no, fuck you. It wasn't Nazis that were spanking me. It was just Germans. Yeah. I'm not going to be shamed by this so-called Nazi S&M thing. Well, I will say, it wasn't, I know what you're, I hear what you're saying. It wasn't hiding it was we had sort of a game plan going. I put a little too much faith in. Hey, look, we're not getting. Parties. We're not talking about the past. I'm talking about the future. Yeah. So starting now, are you going to be fighting back? Are you going to be providing evidence that you're innocent? And yeah, getting, absolutely. I mean, that's why I'm on here, and I'm your that's name. That's why I'm I'm thankful that you gave me an opportunity to do this. You're the only person. You're the only show that has given me an opportunity. That's not trying to trick me. You know, the New York Times tried to trick me. The uh, a bunch. You know, L.A. Well, Times here's the and, big picture. Because we don't have enough evidence to prove anything. If uh, so, let's. I'm not even saying you're innocent or guilty. What I'm saying is, we can't be living in a world where someone makes a flippant allegation, destroys someone's entire life with no police, and then merrily skips along their way uh, uh, over the wreckage of this human being. Right. If he's a rapist, charge him. Please, please go to the police. Take me to court. Try to get me. Try to put me in jail. I would love that. That this would man be is amazing. begging to be charged with rape, and I'm not joking. I'm not. I'm okay. not either. What do you think of this, Kale? Let's do second degree right now. Uh, uh, the the serial thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can we do that? Let's end the show with a severe pounding uh, as we initiate uh, Kale and bring him into the fold because the message here isn't just. We are proud of you for coming forward, and uh, we want you to be a proud boy. The message here is, just when you think no one cares and no one, and all loyalty and honor is gone, we are a group here that is willing to take you in and will happily 
put you under our wing and say, this guy is one of us. We're here for you. We support you. Well, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on. It's great. This is just the beginning, and I can't wait to start fighting back. Wonderful. Well, a big part of fighting back is the second degree, and the reason we invented the second degree is uh, adrenaline training. We want you to be able to think on your feet and be lucid uh, while adrenaline is coursing through your veins, and a great way to get that adrenaline going, as the Hulk will attest, is to be pounded. So let's get you over here. Guys, do you want to come out here? Well, that's going to come in handy with these punches. <laughs> All right, five breakfast cereals. Yep. Enough for you. Hurry, before he starts thinking right, about breakfast cereals, come over on this side, guys. Let's get symmetrical. No face, no nuts. Well, technically, we may do face and nuts, but as gentlemen, we tend to avoid them. All right, all right, all right. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go! Uh, Count Chocula, uh, uh, Cocoa Puffs, uh, Fruit, Fruit Loops, Apple Jacks, Cheerios. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on The Gavin McKinnis Show.